Hello, 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 everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you so much for being here today. This, this is a very special for me. My first time in Istanbul. My first time, of course, presenting Molana Rumi's work in Istanbul. And these are the place that he roamed 800 years ago. So it's very special. It touches me. I almost still can't believe it. I don't think it's registered yet. I just came in last night. So um, I'm very happy, very happy to be here and grateful. I'm going to share from Gold. This is the book of, of my translations that came out uh, last year, 2022. And so, you know, I'll be reciting, I'll be talking about some of the poems, I'll share some of the Persian so you can hear the original. We'll look at one comparative translation. And if anyone has any questions, you know, at any point, you can pipe in, you know, and we can have a discussion too, so. Na'an shiram ke ba dushman barayam, mara'in bas ke man ba man barayam, chokha ke paaye ishqam, to yaqeen don, kazin gil, so I always say this is Persian with a New Jersey accent because I was born because I was born in America and I came back to the language after not caring about it for many you know as an adolescent as a child and adolescent but I didn't really care that I was Iranian and then eventually you know after hearing as a child uh, my father recited it and remembering it, not caring at that time, but remembering there was something special about the rhythm and the rhyme of this poem. And after it would be recited in the house, you know, it would feel like the poem had galloped across the living room and I was standing in the golden dust that it left in its wake, that the, that the galloping legs stirred up. There was this sense of awe. Something had changed in the room. So I remembered that. And then I started reading translations, and then I started singing some of it in Persian, and then um, I started translating. And so I'm gonna find that poem. I... I'm not that lion battling an enemy. Confronting myself keeps me busy enough. I am the soil love seeds. Roses and lilies bloom from this mud. I ached from separation. I cloaked myself in night emerged a shining moon. Consumed in love's fire, I slip through any opening. I rise like smoke. I am a child. Love is my teacher, waking me from ignorance. Like love, capital L, love, the grand 360 degree embrace of creation, love, the Sufi mystical love, like love, I will live on the love that is inside every single one of our cells, the love that actually makes all these cells move in harmony, that unfathomable that we call God, that love, I will live on, like love, I will live on, radiant, eternal, when eating and sleeping are done. Till then, like Bubakr, the master musician, I quiet my mind and listen. I fast. In silence, we hear body become spirit. So this deep listening is such an important part of Sufi mysticism. The first word of the sixth volume ode to human liberation is Beshno, listen. First word of the sixth volume ode to human liberation, Beshno. Listen, and not listen to me. Molana Rumi is not saying that, that, that listen to me. He says, listen to the neigh, right? And the neigh is playing the melody. The neigh is the empty reed that the breath of God is moving through. And we can be like the empty reed. This is one of the goals of Sufi mysticism is to burn away the heavy weighted narratives of the ego, the chatter the chatter, right? And when we listen deeply, the only way we can listen is if our mind is silent, right? So deep listening is such a demanding meditative practice. And he says, Take the cut of the mind's doom-ridden chatter out of your ears. Pambe is cotton, right? The cotton stuffs our ear. Vasvas, pambeya vasvas. Vasvas is one word for the spinning, doom-ridden chatter. Pambeya vasvas, birun kun zegush, ta begush atayadas, gardun khurush. Take the cotton of the mind's doom-ridden chatter out of your ears. 
hear the booming voice of the heavens, hear the roar of fate, hear the ruckus the muse makes. Right? The sense that there's this other voice that comes through when I listen deeply enough, when he was in this deep practice of whirling and the drum was playing, he was in this quiet meditative space and he would compose while whirling. So the ruckus the muse makes was coming through him and he was composing. Rumi read his father's diaries and his father was always complaining or seems to have been complaining a lot about this and that and that king and how come I'm not a bigger, how come I'm not preaching at a bigger mosque and all these things, you know, this kind of chatter, this kind of chatter. So Molana Rumi was like, forget that. And he had these two towering figures, his father in the first part of his life and then Shams of Tabriz and when he was 38 came in and Shams was the one who said, professional, listen, and we're going to listen to music, not just to a book read aloud, because Sama initially meant listening to a book read aloud. Mm -hmm. So if you listen to a full book read aloud, you get a Jazat Sama certificate that I listened to this book, so it's scholars, for the scholars. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Shem said, all right, we're going to listen to music, and we're going to dance. And for some conservatives, this was very radical. This was music was considered to some, to some, to not everyone, a distraction or even a sin. Mm -hmm. So for him to embrace this practice, whereas his father loved music but didn't make it part of their daily life. So this was a big transition to go from his father as towering figure to Shams of towering figure, and then this merging with Shams, with his friend, with his mentor, with his beloved guide, his beloved friend, his beloved whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And they had a good time. <laughs> they laughed a lot. You know, mysticism, if it doesn't bring us to laughter, it's not doing its work yet, right? So, so you heard the repetition, come and dance, come and dance, come and dance, come and dance. Now here's a ghazal where I chose not to put the um, repetition at the end of the couplet because in English it served better in the translation for the uh, refrain of laughing or laugh or a laugh to slink through the poem. Of course, in a ghazal, there are these leaps between couplets, so it's not narrative. So when we listen to a ghazal, well, we always get a second chance, and a third chance, and a fourth chance. Because if we miss a couplet, you know, because we went ADD for a second, <laughs> um, hey, you could catch on to the next one, and there's, not, there's no narrative. You didn't miss a narrative. Your laughter turns the world to paradise. It tears through me like fire. It teaches me. Reborn in emptiness, I emerge laughing, here to learn from love, new depths of laughter. I've been short on courage, but I have a heart of sunlight straight from the king's hand. I stir up laughter even in those who fear joy. Crack open my shell, steal the pearl, I'll still be laughing. It's the rookies who laugh only when they win. <laughs> Last night, the spirit of dawn came to my room, gave me a lesson in laughter. Our blazing, our blazing roars lit the morning sky. When I sulk like a rain cloud, laughter flashes through me. It's the habit of lightning to laugh through a storm. Look at the furnace, look at the gold, see the glowing red veins, gold, laughing in fire, daring you, prove you're no fake, laugh even when you lose. We are fodder for death. So learn to laugh from the angel of death. He laughs at the jeweled belts and crowns of kings. All that splendor is just a loan. Treetop blossoms erupt in laughter, petals rain down. Laugh like the bud of a flower hugging the ground. Its hidden smile opens to a laugh that lasts a lifetime. Now that last, that last thing, that hidden, hidden smile. You know, the bud has that 
opening smile that open blooms into a laugh. That's very Persian to say the laughing flowers, the blooming flowers, the laughing flowers. So this idea of this very internal smile opening into the laugh that lasts a lifetime because truly the, the Sufi path too, you know, I'm gonna say, what is the Sufi path about? One thing I had already said was deep listening, right? And it's burning through the egoic, egoic narratives that block us from being permeable to the wonders of existence. Also, uh, this internal smile, right? How do we achieve this etern- internal smile, right? This is where uh, this kind of longevity of wellness and happiness uh, sustains. And even the image of it begins to, st- to begins the process, catalyzes the process, you know. So it's a wonderful mm-hmm. philosophy. It's given me a lot of joy. I mean, I have grown uh, through the, the digestion, through the consumption and digestion of these poems and the repetition. Mm-hmm. That place where no wall remains, one could say is Latif. Latif is one of the 99 names of God in the Sufi tradition. They say, Ya Latif, Ya Halim, Ya Latif, Ya Halim. Latif is this, as I said, this permeable place, right? This porous place, this translucent place, delicate as silk is what it means, delicate as silk. How can there be a door where no wall remains? So there's an opening for the exchange. And I- mm-hmm. the big redwood tree, right, is this strong tree with this thick bark, strong wood. But the place of exchange, of course, are the root hairs, the tiny, tiny, latif, mm-hmm. delicate root hairs. Mm-hmm. So what does it mean, also part of the Sufi tradition, to allow the walls to thin down, to allow the armor to thin down? And of course, the ego is addicted to putting up defenses. Here's one of his confessional poems uh, that, that shows us that how human he was and how this was all part of his own internal work. He says, I saw myself sharp as a thorn. I fled to the softness of petals. I saw myself sour as vinegar. I mixed myself with sugar. An aching eye seeing through pain, a stewing pot of poison I was both. Reaching for the antidote, I touched compassion. I touched mercy. I was a cup holding only the dregs. I poured in the water of life. Raw and callow, I followed the ones already cooked by love's fire, by life's fire. In the dirt on the path of love, I found the medicine that ensouls sight in the dirt. Hawk, humbly down to his knees, right? In the dirt on the path of love, I found the medicine that ensouls sight. My armor thinned to a silken scrim, shargashdanda letofat. People translate it as shar. It's not shar. It's not shar. It's shar. Shar means hair thin. They ignored letafat, that divine word. They ignored it. Shargashtam, not shir. Shargashtam dar letafat. My armor thinned to a silken scrim. I sifted the soil that gives vision to the blind. Love said, yes, you have arrived, but don't think it's your doing. I am wind, you are fire. I stoke your flames. Mm-hmm. So after all that work, right, that still, still, he says, yes, you've arrived, but remember, you're gonna have to circle back again. Like the whirling, like the whirling, like the whirling. We always come back to the same points and coming back to the love, coming back again to another surrender, to another fana. Fana is that very famous Persian word and Arabic word that means, uh, you know, some, some, some define it as ego death, right? Dissolution of the stifled aspect of self the stifled aspect of self and union with, with the divine, with the soul energy. As, and of course, it is the difference between a tense existence and a relaxed existence. You know, he says, at the doorway to emptiness, all knots come loose. And that gusha yesha adam on ha goshud. At the doorway to emptiness, all knots come loose. Emptiness, again, calling us to the silence, calling us to the meditative state calling us to 
just even five minutes a day. So I look at mysticism as an invitation to relaxation. Because it is in the, rela in the relaxed state that we are, you know, our best selves. And of course, you know, existence isn't easy, you know, and paying rent or catching the bus or this or that that everyone has to do puts these stresses and pressures on the being, which is, is, is not something I in any way mean to diminish, but just to say that how can we go through life in a state of relaxation and to have systems that create relaxation instead of stress and trauma. I mean, to me, it's just remarkable that in 2023, there's still war. I mean, in the age of climate crisis, all hands on deck and someone's still allowed to do that. I can't believe it, you know. But anyway, the invitation is always there. You know, the invitation is always there. You asked me during the uh, lunch about comparative translation. Mm -hmm. So I wanna share a poem. We'll first read my version and then we can look at Coleman Barks' version, just so you could see the differences. How could I have known this longing would drive me mad? Light, a roaring hellfire in my heart, make a river gush from my eyes. How could I have known a flood would snatch me up and toss me like a ship in a sea of blood? How could I have known a, mon a, mo a monstrous wave would rise up, crack the hull, fling the planks into the air, and drag me down to the ocean floor? How could I have known a whale would rear its head, gulp down the sea, and leave a desert behind? How could I have known the desert's cracked seams would gape like a mouth, sucking the whale down into bottomless depths. Turn after turn, now there's no trace of whale, desert, sea, me. Mm -hmm. I'm annihilation. How can I ask how? Every how drowned in an ocean of no how. Mm -hmm. Every what and why dissolved like salt on my lost tongue. Like every creed and school of thought, I was awestruck, struck dumb by the ocean's opium, by the beloved, flooding, tangled groves of thought with light. What can I do but praise? Ocean of hidden pearls, black sea of stars, flowering fields of wide-eyed narcissus, I exhale, you expand. Shams comes from Tabriz with the practice, with the key and the practice. Bitter turns sweet. We're so flushed with fire, we open like a rose. Mm. So it's a really beautiful poem, and this beginning, dramatic beginning of the of the monstrous wave, the sea of blood, the whale devouring everything. This is like total annihilation. Then you look up and start to see some light, right? And then what can I do but praise? And that is Hedat. Hedat means awe. As uh, the American writer Terry Tempest Williams defined awe as the moment ego surrenders to wonder. I want to show you another translation. And Koba Burks called the poem Content with Ignorance. And he was translating Heirat, which means awe, as ignorance. Oh. <laughs> and he also translated the whale as an alligator. Oh and my. it's happening in an ocean. Why? I don't know. He lives in the American South. And there are alligators in the American <laughs> South. All right. <laughs> he said, I, do, I did not know that love would make me this crazy with my eyes like the river Jehun or Sehun, carrying me in its rapids to the sea, where every bit of my shattered boat sinks to the bottom. An alligator lifts his head and swallows the ocean, then the ocean floor becomes a desert, covering the alligator in sand drifts. Changes do happen, I do not know how, or what remains of what has disappeared into the absolute. I hear so many stories and explanations, but I keep quiet because I do not know anything and because something I swallowed in the ocean has made me completely content with ignorance. 
it's a different kind of poem altogether. Yes. It's very, yes. Different, very different. Very different. And, you know, we don't have the details of the desert's crack seams, gaping like a mouth, swallowing down. There's a lot of details missing, as you can see. Um, but that's an example. And I show that, you know, listen, it's a mixed bag. There are certain lines by Coleman Barks that have touched me very deeply. There are certain poems that he has translated that have touched me very deeply. And then there are poems like this where um, I think that, you know, obviously the, the Ghazal begged begged for another translation, you know. And so that's one of the one of the reasons that I decided to translate is because some of the translations are not really bringing the poem forth, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there is another translation of this poem out there too um, by Franklin Lewis, which really has the details of the first half very clear. But um, he used the Farouzan Farah edition. I use the Moshfeq edition, which has the second part. So there's also that, which edition are you using, right? And for me, like the poem ends when he says Shams of Tabriz, because that's how he ends the poem. So I'm certain that that turn is there, you know, it has to be, you know. So anyway, there's different, different translations. So speaking of this drunk, 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 drunk. So we just heard in that song, their blood is wine. In another poem, he says, we are drunk, but not on crushed grapes. Anything the mind guesses, we are far from that. So there was a, this is a metaphorical wine, but also on occasion there's a literal wine too. You know, so um, apparently Shams of Tabriz sent uh, Rumi to the Jewish neighborhood where they make the wine, because in the Muslim neighborhood, of course, they don't make wine. And he said, go get the wine and walk home with the wine. So everyone can see, because Molana Rumi was a sheikh. <laughs> and to walk home with this wine was again, radical. And why? He said, you have to let go of your good name, of your reputation, if you actually want to be unshackled, right? And you have to let go of dogma, and you have to be brave. And you know, like Blake said, the mind, mind forged manacles. For a lot of Sufi mysticism too, it's about tearing off the mind forged manacles. Right? Mm -hmm. So, whirling sky, watch how the elements whirl. Water is drunk, air is drunk, earth is drunk, fire is drunk. And don't even ask me about the unseen. Spirit is drunk, intellect is drunk, imagination is drunk, and the mysteries of existence and the mysteries of eternity, they are the drunkest of all. <laughs> Liberate yourself from the tyranny of self. Be humble as soil and you will see each particle of soil is drunk on love by the creator's design. In winter, the, the, in winter, the garden is still drunk. Mm. The trees, the roots of trees are secretly sipping wine. Mm. You have a jug of love's wine. Pour for all in equal measure. Mm. There's been enough brawling. Friends, enemies, admit it or deny it, they're all drunk all whirling at the core, at the core, because this is the belief that this is the building block of our existence is intoxication. Yeah. The building block of our existence is love. We're all whirling at the core, and in truth, those electrons are spinning, right? There's tons of spinning happening inside of us. <laughs> Keep pouring, loosen the knots. Only a head steeped in the wine of love will tear off the turban and crown. Pour the reddest wine for the ill and ailing. Let their sallow faces flush with fire. Let them burn with love. God's wine is light and delicate. You can drink countless jugs. Shams of Tabriz, in your presence, no one is sober. Infidel and believer, ascetic and winemaker, they're all drunk on love, whirling through and through. So what a guy Shams of Tabriz must have been, Jeez. <laughs> Although a lot of people were mad at him and didn't like him. That's the irony, is that Rumi is singing his praises so much, but they drove him out of town. Mm -hmm. Apparently, according to the story, his disciples were jealous. And they're like, who's this guy? Who's this scruffy vagabond? <laughs> you know, who's he? Get it? Let's get him out of here because he's taken our teacher away from us. You know, ever since that diving in with Shams, he never preached anymore. He was like, I'm done with preaching.
region. Mm -hmm. And then he put, for instance, he told them to listen to Shams, and they were like, we don't want to listen to that. Later, he said, listen to Salahuddin. Salahuddin was his friend, the goldsmith, right? And he was a very warm-hearted, generous human being. He wasn't a scholar, he wasn't a theologian, but he had a heart of gold, mm -hmm. the goldsmith with the heart of gold. Mm -hmm. And, and Molana Rumi said, listen to him. And they were like, what? They were annoyed. But he was going for something deeper, and he was saying, it's not about, you know, his credentials. What is his spirit? you got to learn from his spirit. You know, that was the idea. He says, spring is here. Spring is here. Fragrant, musky spring is here. The beloved is here. The soul of souls is here. The one who welcomes everyone is here. Wine is here. The wine of dawn is here. Wine that floods the soul with joy is here. The cup there fills everyone's cup. Clarity is here. Transparency is here. Stones in the river pulse with sunlight. That clear river. Clarity is here. Stones on the river pulse with sunlight. The cure is here. The cure for every ill is here. The friend who soothes the ache is here. The healer is here. The healer who's felt every shade of feeling is here. Dance is here. The whirling dance is here. The eternal bond and glorious breeze is here. Poppies, basil, and the tulip stunning eyes is here. Mm -hmm. This planet. Right. Mars? No. <laughs> One is here, one who makes someone of no one is here. The bright moon that clears the haze is here. The heart stirring all hearts to laughter is here. The beloved is here, the soul of souls is here and never left. It's our eyes that come and go. Be silent now, let silence speak. Surrender the syllables you count on your fingers. He says to the poet, right? So he was writing a meter. Surrender the syllables you count on your fingers. The river of countless messages is here. Mm. I like this idea. Make room for love's wine. Be its cup, right? Grudges and spite weigh on the heart. Let seven streams of water wash them away. A meditation, a visualization. He uses the, he invites us to use our imagination in the service of wellness, you know? Mm -hmm. Let seven streams of water wash them away. Make room for love's wine, be its cup. I'm not that unrequited lover, so bitter I flee love. There's no dagger in my hand, no urge to dodge a challenge. I am a wooden board the carpenter sizes up. Which carpenter? Mm -hmm. His axe, his nails, they don't worry me. Let the carpenter make something of me. If I resist, let love's flames have me. I'll be cramped and dark as a cave if I flee the friend who finds me there. I'll be frustrated dull and barren as stone if I don't step out of my petty self, take off its tight shoes, and wade into rubies. How many eons must pass before the treasures I find here appear again? Why ignore them now? And why not seek my noblest self? I'm not here to be ignoble. I don't have a queasy stomach. Why should I flee the tavern? And why fear the prince? Why fear the prince? I'm not a bandit, though I curb my heart. Enough, quit it, I tell it foolishly. And my heart answers back. I'm in a gold mine, steeped in gold, deep in gold. Why flee your chance to give?
And that's why I called the book gold, you know, because mm -hmm. this is not the material gold. This is the gold of the heart. This is the energy, the heart energy, the generous energy, the soul energy, the expansive energy, the infinite energy that is eternal and that is coursing through us and is sometimes hard to access. But hey, you can try, you know. And then when we do, it's a nicer existence. Mm -hmm. You know, so this beautiful gold, this alchemy, you know, he talks about alchemy a lot. And, you know, bringing from the copper mental state to the engoldened mental state or feeling state. This time, this time, this time, I am wrapped and entwined in love. This time, I'm free of worry. No obsessions with self-preservation. Mm -hmm. Thought, sense, reason. I scorch them to the ground. I tore my heart out. I'm still alive. Nothing ordinary here, my friends. Even the love drunk ecstatic would be shocked to feel what I feel. Even the madman spilling stars would flee this pitch of ecstasy. I linked arms with death and leapt into emptiness. My mind second guessed me, chased me down, tried to scare me out of surrender, out of <laughs> surrender. Tried to scare me out of surrender. Why, why should I be afraid? I give form to formless fear. I'm the one who writes its every rant. I write its every rant. Once I lived in a prison, of circumspection and calculation. I thought I was being prudent and wise. Mm -hmm. A prison? Why? What had I stolen? <laughs> there, I drowned in a sea of blood. I wept like an untamed horse at bit and bridle. I washed my blood-soaked clothes and mind in the soil. Blood nourishes a baby in the womb, blood thunders in the baby's ears, reborn so many times. I know that music. Come, come into my invisible dwelling, see me through my eyes. Love's wine flows here. Drink with no mind till you laugh with no mouth. <laughs> Yeah, I feel, you know, there's this poem by Mark Strand where he says, I've been eating poetry, he says, and he says, the ink is running down the corners of my mouth. <laughs> You're drunk in it. So, and also, yes, yeah, and also Rumi says, eat my poems like Egyptian bread. <laughs> so I said, it is really an eating, it's in my blood, it's coursing through my blood. I spent so much time with these poems, yes, you know, yes. and, and I sat with my mother you know, we read them together. And my mother's grandmother would tell her stories that, you know, the backstories of some of these. So it's, it's, it's like in my, my bloodline too, sort of to love this. And um, I, I think that when, when I work on something, you know, I revise a lot. And I always feel I say like, it's kind of like it's a, it's a hunk of marble and then I'm going down the body of it, going down the body of it, going down the body of it. And then I'm, then I got the, you know, the, the, then I'm sanding it or whatever they do with marble, whatever, buffing it, buffing it, you know. So by the time I'm done with it, I know it by heart. And I only know a poem is done when I really can do an embodied recitation of it. Because for me, it's an oral tradition, really. And, you know, and he actually didn't, a lot of the poems he didn't write down. He would just spontaneously dictate them. And he was spontaneously composing. Of course, I'm sitting there, like, working. <laughs> but, 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 but by the end, I know it, and by the end, it's in my body. And I think it's only working and activated when I really enjoy the translation, and there's no part of it that stops me. Although sometimes, every once in a while, like, I'll be like, oh, I could have 
you know, done that a little. Maybe I want to tweak it here or there. But but generally, uh, I think, and, and, and I also think in terms of like existence and spiritually and like emotionally, uh, these poems have really brought me a medicine. I mean, take the kind of the minds, doom and chatter, mm -hmm. I had a lot of doom and chatter as a child and adolescent. I had a terrible anxiety disorder. I mean, a full on, like, Mac Daddy anxiety disorder. <laughs> you know, like, really strong anxiety disorder on steroids. <laughs> you know and so so for me this this he speaks to that part of the mind that is that is almost like an autoimmune disorder the mm. mind attacking the self why does the mind do that you know why does the mind deliver negative scary stories and make someone so upset and uncomfortable why was my mind doing that you know so this is uh, this happens right but but this poetry i feel speaks to that and to many other things you know, but it was a poetry that I needed, that nourished me. And I don't think that, you know, I don't think all poetry has to nourish. Of course, I don't think that. I don't think all poetry has to be medicinal. Of course, I don't think that. But I do think that this poetry happens to be so. It happens to have a function beyond an aesthetic function, beyond aesthetic delight. You know, it's got a, a, a strong purpose. And it worked me, on me. And it's like my friend said to me, you know, you, you have repeated that word, let love, that line, let love, the water of life, flow through our veins. Oh, flow, flow, flow. Let love, the water of life, flow through our veins. And why is it the water of life? Oh, because what is going to ensure that the internal landscape within us is not a battlefield, but a garden? Is this love, is the water for that? So anyway, just feeling these things, thinking about these things, they just made, they just made their way into my psyche, thank God, mm -hmm. and release me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, the way you perceive this whole thing, it's not just uh, the translation. There is a symbiosis of the source and the target. Yeah. The, uh, the, the source language and the, uh, Target language. Yeah. They work together. Yeah. You made it, you make it work together. I hope so. That's why it's so fascinating. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and I found the word Ayin. 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 Do you have that word? Yes, of course. Okay. Ritual. 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 Tradition. Yeah. Way of yes. life. Practice. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. 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 Great. Yes. Repetition. Yeah. Repetition. Yeah. Repetition. Yeah. Repetition. Yeah. Repetition. It's, it's got a sense so of, um, of worship as well. Indeed. So. Yeah. Indeed. 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 Oh, yeah. A, a sacred, sacred yeah. practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A, a devotional practice. Did you find at times that there were just no English words to capture the essence at times of what Rumi was saying, whether it be a wordplay or some type of metaphor, and you're like, oh, there's just no word for this. And if you came across that, how did you handle that? Yeah. Well, I think in a way, like, Fanna is a good example of that. There isn't one way to describe that because it's not just ego death. Because what are you, and it's, you could say, d dissolution of self, but, like, which aspect of self? And, and what are you dissolving in? You know, so trying to, in the body of the poem, uh, get that across, you know, requires more words. So I wouldn't... I wouldn't limit myself to one-to-one -to -one if mm. I couldn't, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there's a word like oud, for instance. Oud means um, aloe's wood, which is incense. It also means the instrument, mm -hmm. right? So in one of the poems, he says, he says, Atash zadi bar ma, nezarekon bar ma. So it's very compact. Atash zadi bar ma, nezarekon bar ma. But, but what did I want to do with oud? Yeah, it is. I didn't want to pick one or the other because I like both of the meanings. So I decided to put both. So I said, um, you lit a fire to the fragrant wood and body of song in me. Watch the smoke rise. So atash zadi bardudim, nizarekun bardudim, nizarekun bardudim means watch the smoke rise. Ood and dude rhyme. Amazing, right? But, 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 so the fragrant wood is there, the incense, the body of song. That's how I translated the instrument, you know. You, you lit a fire to the fragrant wood and body of song in me. Watch the smoke rise. 
And then in another poem, you know, he says, just the other day, fire whispered to smoke. No stick of aloes wood, there's the aloes wood, the oud. No stick of aloes wood shuns me, right? And, and it says it profits in perishing, right? But, but there's something that was missing, I felt, because most people don't know what oud is. What is aloes wood? What does it smell <laughs> like? So I added the smell. So I said, just the other day, fire whispered to smoke. No stick of aloes wood shuns me from its flame. He does say from its from its flame. Uh, I'm sorry, from its gnarls and knots. He says gnarls and knots. From its gnarls and knots, my flames unfurl a honeyed musk of amber, fruit, and flower. It profits in perishing. It welcomes me, even thanks me. At the doorway to emptiness, all knots come loose. Mm -hmm. Cheers, my flame-eating friends and love-slain victor. We saw you rise from the dead. We bow in awe. So the part that I added was this honeyed musk of amber, fruit, and flower. You know, why, why would we want to miss the fragrance? Mm -hmm. So sometimes I unpacked. Mm -hmm. And then if there's like a saint, like Mansur. Mansur is a Sufi saint. Most Americans don't know the story of Mansur. Uh, so then I embed the story into the translation, you know, mm -hmm. instead of doing a footnote or endnote, which is totally legit, you could do that too. But it was more fun to try to just get that story in there with, you know, minimal words, but it's, a, it's possible. So that was my approach, you know. You, you put the story in the poem itself. Yeah, it's okay. very short, but it was enough to tell, you know, the old mystic Mansur, page 76. Mm. So it's like towards the bottom of the page, it says, The old mystic Mansur trusted in God, love, truth, in its omnipresence. Stepping down from the pulpit, he said, Truth dwells in me. Blasphemy, said the Caleb. Hang him from a tree. Unchained and in chains, Mansur danced his way there. At the gallows, he rose. So he's like a Christ figure, practically, but someone who was said, God is in me. And that was the blasphemy. So none, the, that story is not in the, in the poem, but it's the back story. And so if I had just said, um, I can't remember what exactly, I could find what the minimal thing he said, but he says the old mystic said, you know, that I am God, truth dwells in me. And then, uh, you know, he was, he, the, that he rose at the gallows. So I wanted the whole thing to be known, you know, that it was the caliph that was like, you blasphemous, that sent him to the gal, and then unchained and in chains, right? Because he was both chained up, but he was also completely unfettered, you know? And another story says that they like lopped his hands off and he was bleeding and they started, he started putting the blood on his face and they were like, what are you doing? And he said, I want to be rosy cheeked when I see God. <laughs> so he was that kind of, <laughs> you know, we know a lot of people like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know him as exactly, exactly. We say Mansour Hallaj. Uh -huh. Mansour Hallaj. Mm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you know him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I remembered when I read your. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. embedded. Yeah, exactly. Embed, embed. Unpa a little unpacking, a little bit embedding. That embedding, embedding, embedding. That's part of my my way of doing it. And you know, um, you know, when he said the carpenter, let the carpenter make something of me. And I, I mean, this is a reference, most likely, although he doesn't name Jesus in that poem, but it's most likely Jesus. And he often says Esau, 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 Esau. And in another poem, he actually says, you know, the one that I read when I said. Uh, uh, reaching for the antidote, like when he says, an aching eye seeing through pain, a stewing pot of poison. I was both reaching for the antidote. I touched compassion. I touched mercy. He actually says, reaching for Jesus. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Reaching. For, no, no. He says, reaching for the antidote. I touched. I touched Jesus. So I could have said, and you know, what? Someone could be upset that I said that I didn't say Jesus. Okay. I didn't say Jesus because to say, touch Jesus, I touch Jesus has so much connotation 800 years later. I mean, we like think, evangelist, 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 call me 1-800-888-555, you know, 
you know, touch Jesus, give me your money. Let's love and break you. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. It breaks, it breaks the spell, you know. So I wanted to do what is the what is what is the characteristic, the essence of Jesus, compassion and mercy. I touch compassion, I touch mercy. And also Rumi is finding all these things within himself. As Mansur al Halaj says, God is within me, truth dwells in me. So, you know, let's 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 allow it that. So yeah, these are some choices, you know. Here because uh, yeah. our poet is uh, tired, he's still right. suffering from jet lag, and uh, I'm sure everybody will want a photo and uh, uh, will want their book signed, and that will also take time. So um, let's thank her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. This is wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you all so much. And um, yeah. You know what I would love to do too is get a group photo, can yeah. we? Group okay. photo first. All right, All right let me stop recording. More important.